This question just never seems to go away. What's going on everybody? It's Robinson here. I'm uh, taking a very nice drive right now. And I figured I got a question a while back, um, as usual, about my opinion on supplements or what are the best supplements to take. Um, so I figured I might as well answer that now while I have some spare time. And I'll, I'll put a, a decent little video together for you guys. I'm gonna preface this right now. I have no affiliation, loyalty, discount codes or sponsorships to any supplement companies. Uh, I've never particularly have done that. Um, I've never grown my social media really to the point where companies are even looking at me to begin with. Uh, I don't even know if that's something I want to do. Uh, just because once you become an affiliate or sponsored athlete, there's a lot of requirements that come with, you know, in a sense, spamming slash endorsing them ever so often and having to talk about other products and all that kind of stuff so i've never done it I'm not saying i won't in the future if i think the offer you know if i happen to like the company and the offer is right but that's something i'm doing currently but i know a lot of people respect my opinion in regards to what to use what not to use what's bullshit um and th that's something i want to address today the main thing here if I haven't lost you already and you haven't tuned out, you gotta remember, supplements are exactly what they're supposed to be, is they're supposed to supplement any sort of nutritional gaps that you may have. So don't be relying on them to put on 10 pounds of lean muscle mass. Um, don't be getting hooked onto the hype of GNC's hottest new supplement, blah, 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 don't bother. Um, it's a waste of time, within three to six months it'll be gone and you'll spend 80 to $90 on some bottle of pills that doesn't do anything that it says it's gonna do, okay? Or most likely, it's illegal, and as soon as the FDA catches up to it, it's gonna be pulled from the shelves. So if it really does do that, it's gonna be banned in the very near future. All that being said, um, it's a lot of debate as to if and what's good or if and what's necessary. So I'm just gonna go through what I've used and what I think is okay to have as you know, your routine building blocks if you would say or your staple supplements and then all the other stuff on the outside as of right now um, I take a multivitamin uh, I am using uh, first forms micro factor uh, I like the formulation I like the ingredients that it has in it is it a necessity no am I saying it necessarily adds any benefit to my health whatsoever or enhances performance by any means no but I figure it's a good way to cover the bases as I'm not a big fruits and vegetables kind of guy. So I know there are gaps in my diet that need to be filled in terms of vitamins and minerals that I'm probably not getting or not getting enough of. So I kind of use that to help fill in some of those gaps. Um, I'm sure if I was willing to eat spinach and broccoli and do some other things that I should be doing, um, I wouldn't even need necessarily a multivitamin. Um, it's also debatable with CoQ10 and fish oils. That's all kind of in there. Um, so I just use it as a cover your basis. Once again, necessary? No. Uh, but you also have to understand that that's an expensive multivitamin where I think it's like 50 something dollars for like a month supply versus your you know, Centrum's men's one a day or something, which is way cheaper for a lot more. But usually the, the cheaper you pay, you're kind of getting cheap product as well um, that's just formulated wrong and you're not getting the benefits out of it that you think you are so that's my choice so that was one that I'm using as a multivitamin um, the staples outside of that I would say are creatine monohydrate I've been using it now for I don't know, 15 20 years somewhere in there uh, five grams a day, no reason to load it unless you want to speed up the cell saturation a little faster, but I just do five grams a day. Um, I feel that overall my explosiveness and my power is better when I have creatine in. I've been way more consistent with it than I have ever been. 
Um, you know, I used to take it like, you know, for a week or two and then forget about it on weekends or whatever the case may be. I am making sure that every day I'm getting five grams a day. Um, obviously, you can get some of that through your diet in terms of red meat and whatnot, but I supplement with creatine monohydrate. I don't see anything based on any of the other varieties that have been offered that surpass what creatine monohydrate does. It's cheap. You can buy it in bulk. You can get a lot of servings out of, you know, I think you get like a thousand grams or something like that for like 20 bucks, some, some cheap. It's, a, it's cheap. It's cost effective. It's one of the most studied sports supplements out there. So I use creatine monohydrate. Um, that one, that one I always have. Uh, in terms of proteins, listen, you don't need a whey protein. You don't need to buy any protein powder. You don't need to have any protein bars. Those are usually used as a meal replacement. Um, also, the absorption rate can be a little bit faster. Taking a shake, especially if you're using, let's say, a whey isolate versus a concentrate, just in terms of absorption into the system if you're looking for that particular feel um, versus eating food. But however, if you want to use a protein powder, by all means, but it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to put 10 pounds of muscle mass on you. It's just a meal replacement. So I would look at either buying a quality weight concentrate or if you have some lactose intolerance um, or want something that's a little bit better, you'll you get a whey isolate. But whey isolate by far is more expensive. Um, once again, necessary? No, not, not at all. But can't hurt to have uh, laying around in case you're on the road. I need to get protein in. Either neither don't feel like showing food in your face, or you're just looking at a meal replacement. Because I look at, I just look at down as broken down food. So those are my big three right there. Then after that, I know there's a lot of debate about branch chain amino acids, whether they're necessary, whether they're not necessary. Um, I've been using branch chain amino acids probably now for over a decade. Um, I feel as if when I'm utilizing them. Um, my fatigue level is lower and my endurance is better. However, that could also be due to the fact that the branch chain amino acid brand that I'm using has citrulline malate in it and also has beta alanine mixed into it. So that could definitely be coming into play, but I was using other brands of BCA prior to that particular brand. Um, sorry, my camera here is like falling down as usual. So I don't look at BCAs as muscle building. Let's just make that straight. I don't look at them as an anabolic muscle gaining uh, supplement. I look at them as anti-catabolic muscle sparing. I also help them look at, like I said, the reduction of tryptophan, um, therefore reducing fatigue during the workout, which may help you grind out an extra couple reps. And as we know, with progressive overload, the more overload and volume you can do, usually the more growth out of a muscle you can get. Now, granted, how, how much of a, a return are we talking about here? debatable who knows uh, I don't think there's enough studies done to prove if and what the benefits of using branch chain amino acids over long term uh, would do versus somebody who's just taking a placebo or nothing we'd have to look at it obviously all of the variables would have to be taken into consideration in terms of protein intake and, and whatnot um, to see if there's really any benefit I know there's, there's been the hot thing with Jerry Ward about are they necessary them stalling fat gain either increasing the growth of cancer and all these kinds of things. I don't, I don't know. I don't even want to get into that debate. I'm not interested in getting into that debate. I use branched chain amino acids. I always have. I always will. Um, you know, especially when I'm up first thing in the morning and traveling to Manhattan and I don't have a meal in me or I'm traveling my job and I don't have a meal in me and then I train fasted. I'm not technically necessarily in a fasted state anymore with branched chain amino acids, but um, I look at it as a muscle sparing product. Um, and as a natural, I want to try to save my muscles as much as I can by, you know, putting leucine and isoleucine and valine into my system. So that's my personal opinion and my personal, um, how I approach it. Um, you know, you could debate about EAAs, you could debate about if you have adequate protein intake, do you need them? That's fine. I mean, we can get into, you can get into the semantics of that. You can quote studies, you can do whatever you want. I'm just saying I like branched chain amino acids. I've always liked them until something really comes out and says that they're absolutely unnecessary. I'm going to continue to use them. Um, and if it's expensive sugar water that I'm wasting my money on, so be it. There are worse things that I could be wasting my money on anyway. 
Um, I know most of you trolls in this section don't even lift and or you're drinking alcohol to excess uh, on a quite frequent basis. So I'll spend my money on my BCAs while you drink beers, okay? Um, so that being said, we've now done multivitamin with fish oil. I did my creatine. I did my whey. I did my BCAs. Um, one of the new supplements that I've really been utilizing, especially in my last prep that I've been liking, is the glucose, uh, the GDAs, the glucose disposal agents that are insulin mimickers. And I don't know what it is, but I feel like I've been, since I've been utilizing it, um, not that it's a fat loss agent by any means. And if you don't know who Cliff Wilson is, you, you, if you can't, uh, you probably have missed it, but he did an Instagram story on GDAs. I uh, use First Forms. By the way, I'm not endorse, endorsing First Forms. I just happen to use it. Um, I've also used Core Load uh, before as well, but I, I'm currently using First Forms GDA. Um, he did a really good explanation of what a GDA, GDA is and how it's properly be used and how people are, are not necessarily using it properly. So GDA is basically an insulin mimicker because um, as you know, especially in an off season when you're bulking, you start to develop some insulin resistance, especially when you've been in caloric surplus for a long time. So th this is a way to reduce some of that insulin resistance. Um, and I'm finding in a deficit especially, uh, I've been using it throughout my entire prep and I feel like even with the loss of carbohydrate, it's getting shuttled into the muscles. So my recovery has probably been better. Um, in, a, in a deficit compared to last time where I just felt like destroyed um, But my overall body composition has drastically improved so I Did my show which obviously some of you are watching that right now um, I have another show coming up in another couple of weeks, and I've done some reverse dieting and my carbohydrates have come up pretty high considering post show in the past nine weeks, and I haven't really put on um really any weight in terms of uh, weight gain. Uh, I've only gained maybe four pounds since nine weeks ago, and my carbohydrates have gone from 150 to 230 with refeeds around three, two refeeds every weekend at around 350. And my body is just soaking in the carbohydrates like it never used to before, um, where I used to just get real soft and store it type of look uh, and get real fluffy. So I'm noticing that I have a much leaner, harder look, and I feel like in this little bit of nine weeks um, that I've reversed out just for a diet break, I feel like my body composition's actually improved. Now, that's just based on the mirror. I don't have the ability to, uh, I didn't go get a DEXA scan. Uh, I'm not gonna make any false claims about how much lean mass I might have gained. I just, looking in the mirror, something looks different, um, and it looks better. So GDA, if you have the money, um, it is a little bit pricey. Maybe something you wanna look into um, either while dieting into a show or something to utilize post-show into an extended bulk. Um, there's, be, there are studies being done on this. Uh, I know a lot of very advanced natural bodybuilders who are starting to use this. So it's something that I've been experimenting with just to see um, how it works. The only thing I can say is I am absorbing carbohydrates way better um, than I used to. Just period. That's all I can say. Just based on look and based on feel. I don't have any scientific evidence to really point to. I'm not going to make any over-exaggerated claims as to what it could or could not do for you in terms of uh, building muscle or things in the future. I'm just saying right now I can see a change in my body composition in the past nine weeks just through the utilization of this, you know, the only thing that's changed is me adding in this product. Um, in terms of test boosters, wouldn't waste my time, to be honest. Um, I don't think they're worth the money uh, for whatever increase they may give you, though minor. There's really not enough done based on any of the ingredients that I can see uh, that's going to cause massive gains in lean, in, in lean muscle. Uh, or anything like that, especially if you're young, 17, 18, 19, 20, I definitely wouldn't waste my time on it until at least you break the age of 25, probably closer to 30, I would say. And even then, I wouldn't look at it as, um, you know, anything that's going to bring you to a normal level if you're low, 
or an, an overly high level, even if you're at a normal level, that's going to give you some incredible rate of return. If you're looking for something like testosterone support, okay. But once again, there's a lot of that you can control through diet, nutrition, and just weight training. Um, you know, you do your squat, your bench, your deadlift, your big compound lifts. That will definitely generate more testosterone throughout your body. Um, but I wouldn't waste my dollars on it. I get asked about that all the time. Most of the rest of the supplement industry out there, as you know, is, is sugar water, overhype, bullshit that's going to get pulled from the market anyway. And pre-workout, I wouldn't waste my... I, I really wouldn't waste my dollars on uh, or depend upon a lot. Um, have I ever used pre-workout? Absolutely. Is it a staple of my training? No. Uh, I know sometimes you guys see me put things up on my Instagram, Instagram story, or Facebook pages regarding a particular pre-workout. And let me explain something. Like The only reason why I'll show that is usually because I got a free sample somewhere and somebody wanted me to try said product. Like back in the day, I did some reviews for BPI because they had reached out to me and obviously several other YouTubers to review their product. I did an honest review. After I did the honest review, they never wanted to give me any more product because I basically said I didn't like their formulation and it made me feel like crap. Um, they don't ask for my honest opinion. Um, but I do have other smaller supplement companies um, that I do get offers from where like, hey, you know, we want to send you a, a free tub. Let us know what you think. Uh, and the main thing is I'm always reading the ingredients on said labels because as you know, as a natural bodybuilder, I have to be careful what I consume. Um, and there are some ingredients, though legal and can be distributed over the counter, are in violation of now of the WADA list. So I cannot consume them. So therefore, I can't take them because if I get drug tested, I would fail. So that's the end of that. And a lot of other supplements that are over the counter, though legal, I can't touch because of certain ingredients. Even if I think it's stupid, they are on the water list, so therefore I can't touch them. All right, guys, I hope you didn't get bored out of your mind. If you have any questions down below, just let me know, and I will talk to you guys later.